go to WA now because oh. we've got some uh, deadly fellas waiting down the down the line there, and uh, three experienced players, former players. David, we're up under. Dale Cricket and Troy Cook. Welcome to Margaret Footy Show. Yeah. Where are you, how are you going there? Yeah, good, brother. It's good. Uh, I've got to catch up with you. Yeah, I know. Well, we caught up at the lake as I've been waiting for your call, bros. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got no re we got no reception over in WA, brother. <laughs> <laughs> now, David, just tell us about this derby and what it means to the WA public over there because they're pretty hotly contested. These two teams, aren't they? Yeah, it is. I mean, I got a, I got a taste of it a couple of years ago when I first came over, and, and I remember my first derby how it just kind of divided all of Perth. And um, I think everyone just loves their footy over here. And that particular game is so important for both teams, in particular for West Coast and Fremantle now. And when you look at the history of, of both teams meeting, um, this bloke, he went for his golden gloves a couple of years ago <laughs> on the, on the <laughs> Oval. And, uh, and the great man down there used to uh, basically smash us all around. So it's, it's a good experience. And it's the closest thing to finals footy that both teams would get early. Cookie, uh, Ronnie here, mate. Good to see you. You can respond, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> 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 That's all right, Cookie. You guys are a bit too far over Western Australia. But uh, you played in two uh, derbies over there. The first one you got pumped by 100 and then the second one by one point. Do the, really, the derbies over there, do they really mean much to uh, the, the sides over there? Do they get a big build-up over there? And uh, you guys are really excited about it? Don't seem like it. <laughs> <laughs> The players will play it down a little bit, you know, uh, you know, when they roll out in front of the media. But now that we've sort of stepped away from the game, you know, it, is, it, it is a big game for, uh, for both sides, especially the way the season's panned out at the moment. Uh, you know, the Eagles have probably uh, you know, found a bit of form uh, over the last couple of years, or from last couple of years, and they're probably you know, you know, ready to take, out, uh, take over the Dockers. So it's, um, and the Dockers need to rebound from last week. They had a bad loss against Richmond. So uh, you know, it's, I think it's going to be a, a close encounter. Kick it here, young brother. It's Gilly here. How you going, bro? Good, good. <laughs> I love you, I love you. Uh, look, back in 1995, you played in the first derby. What was it like? Because you absolutely got thrashed by the Eagles. What was it like? Got what did it affect that on the players? Oh, I won the fight anyway. Uh, no, we got smashed. Uh, I think I got cleaned up in the centre of the ground by John Warswold. And I uh, can't remember what the score was because <laughs> I was out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Cookie, it's Alan Thorpe here. Just, um, you've played a fair bit of footy at uh, Freo and you must be happy with their form at the moment and playing off in the finals and former best in Ferris. How, how far do you reckon they're off in playing off in the grand final? Yeah, the th thing's are looking good at the moment. Uh, obviously, they've got a few, few injuries that need to come back and hopefully they'll pick up at the end of the year. Uh, but they, you know, they've, got, they've recruited some young boys over the last couple of last couple of years and uh, you know, they're starting to come along. Uh, the senior players are playing well like Pav, uh, Big Spider, Aaron Sandlands and, and David Mundy is just now going strength to strength. So uh, you know, the window is probably you know, a couple of years now so they've got to make the most of it before uh, the Big Pav gets, uh, gets a bit too long in the tooth. So uh, you're hoping for big things uh, in the next three years for the Dockers. Uh, Dave, it's Peter Dacos. Um, just, just in regard to the Eagles, it uh, must please you. They've shown some great improvement. Um, they're sitting 10th at the moment. Uh, it looms as a really important game for, for them to stay in touch with uh, possibly finals football at the end of the year. I think they've been working a fair bit on confidence over pre-season. And uh, with the players they've got now, the second-tier players, they're kind of developing a relationship, especially in particular the midfield and the, the back line. So they've got a couple of senior players back now. Uh, Daniel Kerr starting to get a bit of the footy, uh, and when he gets the, gets the footy, it's really attractive for the whole midfield. Mm. Uh, and then you look at people like, um, you know, uh, Prittis, who's continuously under the pack doing his job, and then uh, Darren Glass controlling the back line. So the communication from one end to the other is pretty good now. Uh, it's just developing that relationship over the next uh, year or two. So confidence will come with that. Peter Dacos, the great man. <laughs> David, uh, just tell us a little bit, brother, about the work of your foundation and how many people can support it uh, next week uh, during the uh, Indigenous round over there. Yeah, well, the foundation is basically, in a nutshell, is based around education and health for Indigenous uh, disadvantaged kids right across uh, Western Australia. Uh, we now deliver not only in Western Australia but in Canberra, uh, New South and Victoria now, and we deliver that through... Warrigal College, which is my old school, 
um, which is something that's very close to me at home. But now we're in the space of um, apprenticeships as well. So we've got the, the two uh, the two boys next to me doing their job and pulling their weight and making things happen. But uh, we've got a big fundraiser at that, at that game. And uh, the things that we got uh, with BHB and West Coast, uh, we've got TW Sharings that we're selling at the Oval, which is 20 bucks. And we've got uh, Cookie, the... <laughs> The blue hats over there, so um, Jeez, that's I suppose budget. with all the... Uh, yeah, well, hey, hey, we're, we're a, after a budget. We're it's Gilly. That. It's Gilly. Ronnie wants to know if he can borrow $100 out of the foundation. I saw it in 20s. We already <laughs> owe you that. We already owe you, brother. I'll take the ring of your money. And don't say you run out of credit, too. Uh, so he can, he can uh, pay me back from last week. Where <laughs> can I uh, give that to uh, Gilly? <laughs> Let's get some tips, fellas. Uh, Thorpe, your selection for this big one? I'm going for Freo. Freo, takes? Uh, Freo for mine. Rock and Ronnie? No, I think West Coast will get the Dockers. Freo's got the wood on the West Coast. They won the last seven. I'm going for Fremantle. Yeah, look, Eagles are going good, but I'll, I've just got to stick with Freo. And Kiggity, you're doing a great job with Quantaf. Quantas, not Quantas. <laughs> well, we're finished up now, brother. I'll recruit him. He's over. Don't work there anymore, Gilly. <laughs> well, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we're quickly running out of time. But once again, please thank Troy Cook, David Warren, Bye.